Welcome, everybody, to episode one of Wrecked, a Fat Records podcast. My name is Daniel Allen Lazarus, but you can call me Laz. And I'm Allison. <laughs> Hi, Allison. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing all right. I said I'm going a little crazy, but uh, I'm, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> what do we got in store for the show today? Well, since it's our inaugural episode one, we're going to start from the beginning, which is the first studio release from Fat Records, which is Lagwagons. Duh. Duh? You don't Duh. say <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they spent hours grueling on the name for this album, but mm. it works. It works. It does work. How was your day today? Um, <laughs> oh, man, let's see. I'm probably running on Red Bull right now and maybe some it's herbs because nice. <laughs> that's how I roll these days. And Word. Uh, yeah, I started a new job, so I'm not going to bore everybody with details of fun digital marketing, but other than that, it's been good. I work remote. I hang out with my cat all day. I can't really complain. Excellent. Ex yeah. Before I left work, uh, we had a water spigot like explode. <laughs> um, I have no idea what happened. We've actually been having water leak problems like a week. So this is just like par for the course. Um, <laughs> luckily, I was able to shut it off. Uh, I got to call a plumber tomorrow. But, you know, yeah. uh, that's that's life sometimes. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think people probably need to know that we live like extremely far away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, and I'm in the uh, Austin, Texas. So we're in the two right? biggest states. So besides Alaska, Hell yeah. but whatever. <laughs> Nobody counts Alaska. It's got like a population of ten, right? And there's just it's a, mostly you know, snow. Like... There's more. There's probably more like salmon than people. So you know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> How did we get to this point, though? How, why are we doing a podcast? Uh, I think it's just something that would naturally progress, seeing that we we met at Punk Rock Bowling. <laughs> Sick of it all. Oh, right? Great, great day. But well, I, the one common thing we had is that we both did radio, even though yeah. I only did college radio. You did, did a little bit further. but And then I think also the other connecting factor is TikTok. <laughs> I love TikTok. I won't lie. Yeah. Um, I've actually made so many friends on TikTok, yeah, and I, same. when I discovered your TikTok page, I was so excited. Yeah, like I was like, <laughs> "Oh, I know this person! I know this person!" Yeah, I well, I kind of had a pivot since I used to cover shows and things, and obviously that has not happened. So I was like, "I guess I'm just gonna talk about punk culture and like shit around my town because I don't know what else to do right now." Well, so. and that's that's how i kind of got started on tiktok as well um i was watching tiktok and i i didn't see anything about like, like initially right because i was just yeah. on the for you page swiping through and uh eventually i was like there's nobody talking about punk rock music so i just started making a video here and there and then like the punk started coming in and and at that as after after a while like i discovered the whole sort of punk tiktok scene which is very weird Oh, me. I love it. <laughs> I like it. It's not like a. It, it's it's like it's not like a real punk scene, but it is a punk scene. It's mm -hmm. it's it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. But let's talk about one other thing before we get into the album. What's coming up, Punk and Drublick? I know not everybody in the United States is getting to get to shows. Hopefully, everybody will by the fall. But yeah, they did release Punk and Drublick, which was kind of a surprise to me, at least, because <laughs> obviously all the announcements have been just like bananas, but. The the punk and Drumlick was kind of weird because a it's in Denver and then I'm Worcester. gonna say it correctly Worcester Massachusetts Worcester Mass That's, yeah I once said it I said once I said Worcester in Massachusetts and I I've never gotten more daggers to the face uh, could that. you tell me where War Worcester is please I speak very <laughs> proper English so I don't know what to tell you I'm sorry. Wish to mash. I don't They're know. also I, I... very disappointed I didn't have a Texas accent the the entire time, so it's it's fine. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not disappointed because we're gonna start talking about this album. I yes. Think. Let's talk about this album. When when let's look let's look at some of this information we have on duh here. Well, okay, we'll start with like the very basic stuff. Okay, it was released on October first, nineteen ninety two. Awesome. But it was recorded obviously in that January. They turned it out and it mm -hmm. looks like Fat Mike produced it, which I didn't know, which was kinda cool. Nice. Probably probably because they have limited 
employees and budgets, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it was recorded in Hollywood as well. I like to quote you uh, about Duh. Yeah, so one of the few notes I could find on Duh from Joey Cape directly is, it says, back then we were in inexperienced in the studio. It was less, less about rec the recording process and more about rehearsing. So we recorded and mixed Duh in four days. There's something to be said for that budget. <laughs> you have to give your shit together before you go in studio and the end result is a record that better reflects the band's sound at the time. I think that's why so many bands' first records are considered to be their best. Personally, I don't think Duh was our best though. <laughs> I agree and that with was Joey, Joey Cape. Cape. Yeah, I agree with Joey Cape on that. It's it's not their best. It's a it's a it's a good album. It's yeah. not their best. And um, honestly, I think he like nailed it. Like that's exactly how I I feel about it. I mean, there's there's some things as someone who went to production school, I probably would have done d differently for this album. But the mm -hmm. fact that he gave you the time frame of like, hey, we have X amount of dollars, X amount of days to do this, like. It's going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> a lot of, I think a lot of punk recordings are kind of like that as well, where these bands are, you know, make sure they know everything so that, you know, make sure they know everything so that as soon as they get into the studio, they don't have to spend that money. And that makes a lot of sense. And it's usually so like a friend doing it or <laughs> right. something of that nature. I'm, unless you're lucky enough to, you know, have your own studio you're, you're not going to be able to take the time to or you're like uh, one of those high-end artists that get to rent out a whole villa and like record for like a month <laughs> right you got to be on a major record label or just independently yeah. wealthy so okay so that's I do like that quote so that's that's a pretty good pretty good quote they were kind of mentioning that this album really wasn't successful in the beginning it probably got more sales after trashed i think it probably got more sales after the re-release like when they repressed it just oh, because okay. like from what i can tell from the internet pattern is no one really talked about it until the re-release <laughs> Interesting. Interesting because, uh, I mean, this is just my own experience. Yeah. I'm like from Fat Records territory. Like I'm 20 minutes, 25 minutes from San Francisco if I drive very quickly and there's no traffic. I heard Trashed probably around the time it came out, 95, 96 maybe. And um, as soon as I heard Trashed, got duh. They're kind of synonymous. Uh, also, fun, fun fact about me. Uh, Lagwagon is the first band I ever watched at Warp Tour. So, um, <laughs> as we were giving the tickets to get in, uh, this is in 1996. We could hear Lagwagon playing um, uh, "Know It All," and the first. And I, I remember watching them play, and they ended, of course, they ended, of course, with Mr. Coffee. Yeah. And the first, and I, I remember. In the play, they ended, of course, they ended of course, with Mr. Coffee, which at the time I think was probably my favorite lag wagon. So, well, no, I probably something on trash was high up there. Mr. Coffee is high up there, and I actually like that song a lot. That's an interesting fact that it wasn't as till the re release. I think they've released, let's see, they did a re release in 2007, and they also did one in 2011. So, there's like a couple different versions of <laughs> the. And they have a bunch of demos on on either one. I don't the think it really. Those are good. I, I don't know if it really are... adds to it, honestly. <laughs> uh, it doesn't add to it. I I do like. Uh, let's talk about leftovers. I thought they curated that very well. Yeah. Whereas with all these other re re releases, it's not as curated. It's more like here's everything we recorded from that time period. Yeah. That didn't make it on to the album. Uh, so it's like some of the songs are like, eh, whereas if you go and look at Let's Talk About Leftovers, mm -hmm. it's actually, I think, very well put together in comparison. What's interesting about this album, uh, the cover, uh, what do you think of the cover art? I uh, got the, <laughs> fat, the fat little kid uh, drooling in front of a television. Which I mean, uh, I, I like it, but to like sum up any of Lagwagon's covers, they're all a little strange and have like weird uh, like characteristics, or what is what I trying to think of? Like cartoonish people on them, you know? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Well, some like of Like caricatures, some... there we go. People, you know. Trashed has a bunch of trash on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Double like- Double Platinum has 
plot yeah. on it. That, that's the only one that kind of makes sense, honestly. But like Haas has like the cowboy dude. Well, uh, that, let's talk about Haas. feelings. Has like the nerdy girl. Right. Like, and then Duh has this like kid. <laughs> Is that the kid from this? I think it's the kid from Child Inside, right? That, that's what the I, song's I, about. I think, I think right? so. The song, I think, I, I think, I think that's what the song's about. Hold on, let me let me go look at my notes. <laughs> I didn't really no, go deep into the meaning of. <laughs> some no, of no, songs. try. I'm sorry. Tragic Vision is yeah. is what that one is about. So Tragic yeah. Vision is, is is about TV and the youth. So that's that's probably what it's referencing. Is there anything else that's unique? We kind of already talked about where it was recorded and who produced it. I would say That's... something to note would probably be who was in the band at that time, just because there was oh. definitely a lineup change. Yeah, let's see who was in the band at that time. Yeah. Um, was it wasn't late? Uh, their late drummer was in the band at that time. Yeah, because I went through. If you go on YouTube, there is a lot of lag wagon from this duh trash period that <laughs> weirdly survived the '90s. So like. It, it's funny because you get to see like Lagwagon really become a band because these we're talking like let's see 1992 Eureka Halls like a, a veterans hall <laughs> yeah and then uh, a farmers market so <laughs> right Derek Plord uh, their late drummer who died in uh, the early 2000s yeah but who else was in the band Joey of course, of course yeah. Chris Finn, another guitar player Sean Dewey. Uh, Jesse Buglioni, who I actually interviewed once uh, oh, cool. on their on their bus. Um, that's a cool story. I will actually I will save that for another lag wagon. Like, episode. Yeah, we was like we have a couple more to go, so you might want to put that in your right. pocket. <laughs> I'm looking at the the wiki right now. Also, Fat Mike did additional vocals, of course, and yeah. El Jefe did of some course. additional <laughs> vocals. We, well, there's no way we can tell who El Jefe is because he is like a master impressionist yeah well <laughs> he doesn't want you to know <laughs> so let's let's talk about the songs right okay. we already yeah. kind of touched it we, we already kind of touched into tragic movie. now i went through all the songs i've rated all the songs because i like <laughs> to do that sort of thing okay um some of them are okay some of them are great some of them are 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 like truly 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 great and i and, but tragic vision is okay it's a pretty good starter it has some some good lyrics to it but tragic vision is okay it's a pretty good starter it has some some good lyrics to it why don't I just kind of go down the line and then if you have something to add to whatever the songs are or you can do the same thing. So Tragic Vision, I gave this one like a three stars. Everything's out of four. It's kind of a stark look at how television shapes the worldview of the youth. And of course, in the 90s, there was no, you know, early 90s, no one's on the internet. So everyone's like staring at the television, kind of you know, entranced by the cartoons and whatever <laughs> these kids are watching. I don't know. But they said it's it's kind of interesting because it's kind of about how kids will want to watch these shows and yeah. grow up and want to be the star of every situation. And there's sort of this focus on earning money mm -hmm. uh, within the song. And so Tragic Vision, uh, okay lyrics, good song. I think um, it's a like solid lag wagon song. It's like not too technical, it, exactly. has enough of sarcasm. I don't know if maybe I'm reading too deep into it, but you know, like I think if you were if you were raised as a kid in the '70s, like your parents just let you watch TV and just kind of let you run around without really a lot of recourse. So maybe a lot of kids grew up on TV and it just rotted totally. their brain. Uh, that, that that's me. That is me. I yeah. I can barely think now. I <laughs> just sit and drool like eighty <laughs> percent. Next song called Filled Again, it's 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 meh, right? It's a, it's one of the heavier tracks on the album. Yeah. And it, the the only thing I would say about it is that it shows some of the future potential and kind of highlights the sort of uh the metal, these sort of like semi-metal licks and riffs that mm -hmm. Lagwagon occasionally busts out. Um and, and that's it, the song is just kind of deals with addiction and lies. Yeah. 
One of the best songs, though, on the album is the next one, Bury the Hatchet. It's yeah. One of the best for sure. tracks on there. I highly um, agree as well. Which is, uh, it's it's clearly about a, about people who were friends and they are no longer friends. Yeah. Which I think is like right? super and everyone, relatable. <laughs> I was about to say everyone relates to that. Like I, I've had situations. There's, I have a lot of ex friends, not because like bad, there was bad blood, but just like you know, we're just not, we just grew apart. Though yeah. uh, bury the hatchet is definitely bad blood. Angry yeah, I mean, days, can... well, I say on bury the hatchet, like I will say, like something I really like about Lagwagon is like they can really do a metaphor like really well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bury the hatchet, like to the point song wraps it really well i don't know and again like musically definitely like one of the best songs it's one that when i go to a lag wagon show i really hope to play how do you feel about angry days i remember liking it i honestly have to probably jog my memory on that one i was saying i've only listened to this album so many times in one lifetime but they're more i would say this is like more of a poppy they have like a poppy fun sense of humor or they have like some real technical shit that, <laughs> that they dig into i think over time i started liking songs like angry days in the beginning and be like oh no i really dig it but then as my taste and their style grew i i'm more technical so i like it now like uh hung is one of my favorite hey. albums Paying, hey. yeah. yeah. That movie. Oh, that movie. What am I? That that that's actually my favorite lag wagon album. Is Hang. Same. It's my favorite. Same. Album. That's what I was saying. Um, but I was like, I can't discredit the, the first thing I really liked about him. So yeah. like, yeah, Angry Days definitely kicks that off for me. And in case anyone you know cares, like lyric the lyrically, I think it's pretty good. It's about you know the way I kind of see it. It's you know I imagine this song about looking back at youth and kind of coming of age and looking at sort of like an angry adolescence, I think as like a, uh, like a young punk, I kind of yeah. felt angry yeah. all the time, you know, like, okay. I was just yeah, mad you're, you're kind of nearly on the head because when I, when I was listening to this in my car, I think I related it to the most because when I was younger, like around 12, I had like an anger management problem. <laughs> so like me too, like I was mad <laughs> all the time. So I was like, yeah, definitely relatable <laughs> yeah totally i'm not sure um, everybody can but mm -hmm. or at least they can be like oh, i hate it when i got grounded or something you know something real stupid like that but right just angry adolescence yeah. adolescent rage angst oh I'm, yeah. I'm so happy that i don't have that anymore instead just have old person rage which is way worse so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm like i'm like a full optimist now i did like the complete turnaround but like I'm not to be tried with because I'm like, look, I know all this this rainbow garb and, you know, my my sweetness will throw you off, but I will cut you in an alley. <laughs> do not make me turn punk again. Right. Like, just don't make me do it. Like, I, yeah. I'm like super like I'm I'm like actually in a pretty good place right now. It, yeah. But like if if someone like if someone like decides to do something and I got to be like, man, don't make me be punk because yeah. I don't want to be. Sometimes I don't want to be punk because it, it won't be helpful for situations that I'm in that uh, require like my survivals. The next song is Noble End. I honestly don't remember anything about this one. <laughs> it's no problem. Uh, so this song is to me is kind of about war because it's about a child whose father is like a soldier mm. in the military and then basically never comes back um and then it's it's really kind of about losing a parent in in the name of like american patriotism this is kind of one of their deeper songs on the album i think it's crazy because like they do touch on deeper topics obviously but then they have like beer goggles <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like, you know, beer goggles. Like... Beer goggles. I love the music of beer goggles. It's fun, but it's like the the lyrics are pretty, like totally, or like. That's what's. This is what I don't like about this album. I don't. I don't. I don't I, it's. I think it's too all over the place. <laughs> like eventually they sort it out. I think they truly do. But like yes, they have like this sad Joey Cape song because he's mm -hmm. really good at a sad song. 
but then they have like these technical little opuses and then they have just like we're the lag wagon you know right <laughs> The, the song after Noble End is a song called Child, and I'm going to read some of the lyrics because uh-huh. to me, this is like shit of bad religion uh, because they use a lot of big words. So let's see. Too many hangers in the closet, a clutter of confusion, too little rectitude to hold, a moral absolute. I'm not even like being melodic. Or yeah. Here. Uh, too much distinction to relate to them. Evolutions contemplate with no end. And in a world of give and take and what we refer to as maturity from emotional need to technology, have you a cultured seed of your society? Like, it's a, the, and, and just like, and, and just like, even like musically, it, it has like this kind of bad religion vibe to it. Like, that's the first thing I think of when I hear the song Child. And I'm like, uh, okay, bad religion impersonation, big words everywhere. Which <laughs> when I was young, that was like, oh, bad religion. They just taught me like the store is in so <laughs> i know this is a slightly off topic but did you see the tiktok where they took a simple plan uh i'm just a kid and then they're like we'll make it a bad religious song and just put it yes. the source. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so funny I, I that was really good i wish we wish i had the lyric their their, their new made-up song but it was even better like it was actually yeah. like just like a thousand times better than the simple plan lyrics yeah i, so I did better. test that song so it just makes it a little bit better right okay what well, maybe that's what happened here who knows what do you think of their cover of bad moon rising <laughs> Uh, this is probably one that'll get me a little bit of hate, but I, <laughs> it just gives me I'm at a bad bar vibe. <laughs> All right, so it's not just me. Okay, great, because I find Joey Cape's John Fogarty impression so annoying. I mean, see, I, I'm a, I'm a CCR girl. I ride or die for them. John Fogarty yeah. is is a badass, Fogarty's but dope. it. It is, I do believe it is hard to cover it. And, and people that do do it at like state fairs, bad, bad college bars, just, I don't, I, I mean, and obviously just general friends of like Credence, but I just. <laughs> and Bad Moon Rising is such a great song, like the original version. I think he's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but like Joey Cape's impersonation of Fogarty is just <laughs> I just oh, think it I just think crazy. it was an experiment. They were like, can we make a punk version of this? And that's they do what a lot came of out. They do a lot of covers, I've noticed. Yeah, and that's fine. That's what I'm saying, but it you can't make every cover punk work. I'm sorry, I universe. You're right. <laughs> you just can't <laughs> Uh, we talked about beer goggles, uh, but it's a fun song. It's it a really is a fun, fun song. song. <laughs> I kind of hate that I like it because I hate the idea of beer goggles. It's really such a dumb phenomenon. But like right. getting drunk and going to a bar to pick up girls. Have, uh, have you actually kinda... ever had beer goggles? Like, oh, <laughs> uh, the thing is, is I'm not much of a drinker, and like when I do, when I do drink, it's never to the point of like just being totally shit faced, right? Like I like. Like that, like I did that, like in my early twenties for a very brief period of time, and then I became a stoner. So that was it. Uh, and I just stopped drinking. Like, uh, you know, like I'll still drink, right? Like, if, but it'll be like one drink, maybe two. Uh, so I don't really get beer goggles. I'm that's just not me. Um, but yeah, I knew a I'm, lot of people who did. I'm not a huge drinker either, and I mean, I I have. Don't get me wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. Beer goggles, though, it's like my friends would always talk about it, and I'm like. I don't know. I've never blacked out. I've never had beer goggles. Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. But yeah. I had it kind of slightly once. And I was like, is this person attractive or am I drunk? And then I think I just left. <laughs> I just 
left. I went home. Right. I was like, right. I don't want to find out the the answer, and I just left. Yeah, and, and that's that, that's the thing. Like, I've just I'm just like also not like a bar person, which yeah. I, I I don't know why. I I just would rather I'd rather go to like a coffee shop. I'm so boring. Like, I'd rather just go have a latte. I I'm did two a, years I'm such of a like... terrible punk. I'm such a terrible punk. No, I did service industry, and that's what we did on Sunday oh, of course, and Monday. Of course, right. <laughs> like it makes can, sense. Three dollar, you call it service industry night, but yeah, that's probably the most drunk I was for like two years, and then I was, I didn't really care. Yeah. After that. <laughs> uh, for the most part, the other songs on this album, except for one, are just kind of like okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but I want to talk about Mr. Coffee. Of course. <laughs> First, what's your opinion of Mr. Coffee? First, what's your opinion of Mr. Coffee? I'm like, it's super embarrassing. I really love Mr. Coffee, like, a lot. Like, to the point where I probably... There's no reason to be embarrassed. <laughs> no, there's several layers of embarrassment here because I like it this much. So, A, I would totally tattoo something like that on my body of nice. an homage to Mr. Coffee because I love it so much. Also... Anytime, because I used to be a barista, so that's why this makes this even more embarrassing for myself. Awesome. It's even cooler. If anybody ever mentioned the song to me, which only happened once, by the way, wow. I just knew that person was cool. Like, I just yeah. knew. <laughs> and one dude said that to me once. He, he was, I was making his drink, and he was like, yeah, legal speed, the American way. And I was like, lag <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's why I was like, that's how you could tell people are cool, but I'm definitely a coffee addict. Like, I love the, coffee. Yeah. Like, I need it, like, diesel fuel. It, it's bad. <laughs> it's okay. Little speedy maker. Here is going to yeah. be. I, I mean, that's just poetry, take, right? right? This is poetry. <laughs> I don't know if this is a hot take, right? Yeah. But I feel like this is one of the best punk rock songs of all time. Yeah. And, and you think that. Honestly, and you think the Descendants would have nailed a coffee song? And I mean, like Bonus Cup is cool, and like some of the I other not... little stuff. But this is this is like the coffee anthem, and it, it from which is crazy because you think the Descendants would have owned that. Well, you, you, that's funny because the other thing I was going to say is, is this song reminds me of a Descendant song. Like even like the musical, even like the way music is written. Um, yeah, the, everything about it feels like a Descendant song. Like it could have been on not their earlier stuff but maybe no. on like one of the 90s albums yeah uh, right like they did mug 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 right uh yeah Coffee mug right so, so it, it kind of reminds me of that but at this point i'm like well no at this point descendants are just ripping well they're not ripping off lag wagon but i feel like it's a song like you said the descendants should have done it they didn't lag wagon got it uh and it's one of the best punk songs of all time in my opinion yeah. uh, that's my I, I guess that's gonna be my hot take uh for for this album <laughs> yeah yeah it's um, crazy because like there's songs that i i obviously enjoy in like enjoying this album period but like that's the crown jewel to me <laughs> absolutely this is this is what you want to hear when you put on this album you know when i make like a playlist depending on how i feel i will you know take a song here and i'll take a song there but like mr coffee is like a song I would play for someone who is just getting into the band Lagwagon or into punk rock in general, uh, just because it, it's so good. I mean, like, okay, so what, the one thing I did want to mention about Mr. Coffee, other than the fact that I'm totally obsessed with it, that intro is surprising and sickening at the same time because it's very swanky. It feels like coffee. just kind of leads you in, and then it's just like, and then you're just like, dun, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then it goes the, into the song. It's, it's the just intro is so like good. The aroma. It's like the aroma of the coffee, right? It's it's nice. It's warm. It's inviting. And then you drink the coffee, and then all of a sudden it's like Martin has spoken, right? Yeah. You're like ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was gonna and, say it sounds like cocktail lounge, and then it goes like punk show. I'm like it's it, but it's like two different vibes that somehow fit together. <laughs> And I and I really want to commend the drumming on this. Oh, this. Derek, <laughs> Derek does an amazing job. It feels like I'm having like a caffeine attack. 
Like yeah. that's that's how I feel when I listen to this song. Like this, just the drumming, the beat. Yeah, in like the snare work on it alone is gorgeous. <laughs> right. Uh, Every so drummer this... I know loves it. They're like, oh, that song is the funnest to drum to, and also kind of hard because of the speed. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to remember the last bit of it. I don't remember Mind Over Matter. Yeah, you know, after Mr. Coffee, just everything jump. else is like, whatever. Uh, Stop Whining is okay. okay and then, yeah. And then, then the song Lag Wagon. Uh, I still don't know what a lag wagon is. <laughs> I don't know. I, I figured it's, I, I always figured it was like Dory of Lag Wagon, but like it makes no sense. After Mr. Coffee, you know, you can just turn it off. No, I'm just kidding. It, <laughs> no, you, I, I mean, at that point, album... you have to finish it out. What is it, like, two and a half minutes per song? Like, okay, right. you got another five minutes? Like, Exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I I, was hoping, listening to Lagwagon, the end song, that I would be, like, have some clarity <laughs> to what Lagwagon meant. And I, I honestly still don't know. And if someone wants to correct me on that, I'm really open to it. But, like, I have no idea. <laughs> I always think it's weird when a band sings a song that has the same like name as the band. Um, I'm okay with it if it's like in the vein of like this is our theme song, but <laughs> well, like okay, so like here's another example, and we're gonna we're gonna jump to Pennywise. I don't like the song Pennywise by Pennywise. Like it's uh, not. Yeah. I'm not like a fan of it. But it's then again, okay, I do like. But yeah, I do like the three versions of Bad Religion by Bad Religion. So. <laughs> I guess I'm. I guess I'm a. See, I, my I'm brain. A, a my BR brain goes stand. somewhere else. When I think theme song, my first, my f first with a bullet is the Aquabats because they have the best theme song, and then <laughs> but they're basically ska superheroes, so that makes total sense. Uh, the other one is the Descendants have a theme song, and oh, yeah, that one's. Uh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> But yeah, it's like I'm sorry, you can't you can't be Aquabats in a theme song. It's just, that's just not fair. How does this album compare to the other albums by the band? It is their first record. It kind of sets a bar. What do you think? I guess you have to start from like the beginning. They're like one of the first bands that's signed to Fat Records. I think they're all ridiculously talented, even till this day. I mm -hmm. think this album, duh, is kind of a sampler of what they mm -hmm. can do as a band, which makes mm -hmm. sense with the time that they had to record it. But it also, I think, is a preview to what their other albums are going to be like. So I think it, I think it has an important place, but I don't think it's going to be their best. <laughs> We are of the same mind. Um, when yeah. you say it's like a preview, I had been thinking the entire time I, that it, it shows the potential of Lagwagon. It, it's almost like every song is sort of like a like something they get better at, right? And mm -hmm. on different albums for different reasons. Like some of their albums are a little darker, and there are a few songs on this album that are depressing if you yeah. knew the lyrics. And then there's other albums where they sing about really ridiculous stuff, like beer goggles. And I immediately think of, uh, of, of uh, like, uh, what is it, Stoking Neighbors. And, mm -hmm. like, right after that, you know, both beer-related songs, of course. I would say it's middle of the pack, lower end. I mean, they have a bunch of albums. They have a ton yeah. of albums. I, I don't know how many they have. I, I need to, like, count it up. I think it's, like, ten or so. Yeah, um, if I had to guess. But I feel like all the albums after this have really well thought out, like, themes and song order. Like, I don't know. I feel like mm -hmm. this is the test run. But every album after that has very realized thoughts. <laughs> it, it almost feels like... Um... I wonder if that, you know, you know, I don't, I don't, I think Fat Mike also produced Trashed. Yeah. But in a way, it reminds me of, what's the first no effects record on Epitaph uh, with the cow cover? I'm, I'm losing it I'm right now. I'm talking about, the, there's the Maximum Rock and Roll one, and then there's no, not that the, one. Uh, it's not the longest line. No, 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 no effects. <laughs> albums. I gotta look it up now. I know. It's gonna it yeah, we're like, not gonna sleep tonight if you don't do it. 
<laughs> right. Hold on. Oh yeah, liberal animation. Liberal animation. That is their. I, I believe that is their first epitaph record. Like full length. Mm-hmm. And liberal animation is kind of all over the place. And even though I think it is produced by Mr. Brett, I'm pretty sure and in the, all that. And in a way, it reminds me of that, whereas it feels like a bunch of songs kind of thrown together. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of how I feel about Duh in, in that capacity, is that it feels it feels like there's a lot of stuff going on. They just put mm-hmm. their best tracks on there, like everything that sounded the best. Yeah, but which, I think most first bands do that. Like that's 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 where they learn. <laughs> yeah, they're like, right. this is what we've written so far that we think is good. Let's put it on an album. I mean, that's fairly common practice. So I mean, mm-hmm. I have to say I can't really even really hate on it. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna like I'm not subtracting points for that at all. Yeah, <laughs> not that I not that I'm like giving out points though. Yeah. I totally will if like someone asks me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, I would also say probably what happens further down the line which is they probably had an actual producer and not saying that fat mike isn't a producer because I, I believe he is in some capacity but it probably took him time <laughs> well, rather as engineer. someone more that's seasoned engineer. as a yeah. producer at that time would make way more sense so uh, that's what i'm thinking it's like okay their homie produced it we use our best tracks let's mm-hmm. make it happen in four days and see what happens and luckily i think it really worked in their favor so and they they sold it three times, so hey. <laughs> that that is almost as many times as Skyrim has been put out on uh, various <laughs> uh, consoles. Do you have a final review on it? Any final uh, thoughts? Not too too much. I will say like it was super interesting. I probably listened to this album like a, a handful of times, so mm-hmm. getting to revisit it after after the fact of listening to several other albums. Like, it all kind of came full circle. Um, also, getting to watch them kind of, like, do their chops on uh, YouTube was interesting. Mm-hmm. You can tell, like I said, they're, you know, playing veteran halls and, <laughs> yeah. like, farmer's markets and stuff. And I think Joey Cape wore, like, a very 90s beanie that kind of bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> because he's he's such a good dresser. Like, I, I mean... <laughs> Maybe he, he realized... has some of the be- he has some of the best sideburns in punk rock. That's he and... knows how to pull a basic t shirt off and black room glasses like a no other. I don't I mean, he like totally. makes it look like like it's the coolest thing even though it's literally the most basic thing in the world. But I he it took him a while to get there apparently and I did not know that. Then I would probably say it's just weird that Lagwagon is such a formidable part of like punk. I would say punk in the nineties, but there wasn't a lot of reviews about it. <laughs> it was hard. I looked, I, I yeah. tried finding some old reviews. I, I couldn't find any, you know, my, my personal opinion on this album. When I, I, I did a whole series on TikTok where I just talked about Lagwagon's entire discography. I, I think this was the lowest ranked album, even though it's not my least favorite. I think I, I think I fairly ranked it like a seven out of 10 that that would be my review i guess if i was gonna say but i think it's worth listening to if a you are a lagwagon fan of course you need to listen to yeah, it. yeah i think you should um, definitely start at the beginning <laughs> and if you're if you punk rock music in general um it's also worth listening to and of course like we said mr coffee is one of the best punk rock songs of all time yeah i mean even if you just listen to that track and bounce i'd be okay with yeah totally <laughs> Toss it, toss it on a punk rock playlist and just keep going. Let's. I, I was. I guess I'll go over like the little tidbits that I did find as far as sure. like reviews. Um. So I haven't been on allmusic.com in like forever. <laughs> All right. But it's like some of the ways you can review. It's open to for anybody to review, by the way. So let me nice. just premise okay. that. But like some of the things they they highlight about albums is like. It says, describe album's themes. And this is some of the words they said. It's anger and hostility, (laughs) partying, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and worldview. (laughs) Wow, worldview. I don't know exactly. I mean, I can't disagree. (laughs) Well, there are a couple songs on there uh, that we really didn't talk about, Of Mind and Matter and Stop Whining. And and Of Mind of Matter seems seems to be about like, 
a little philosophical about the nature of humanity. But yeah. I, I do want to talk about Stop Whining, um, yeah. which I think that's the one that starts with the Inspector Gadget theme, right? Yeah. Uh, it is I the see. most, like, lyrically, I think it is the most, gen one of the most generic punk rock songs, like, lyrically. It's so, like, just, like, cheesy. I'm, let's, I think we should read some <laughs> lyrics from this because... <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold, hold, let me let me bring it up real fast. Let's see. Let's let's read these. these. I mean, these, these lyrics just feel like something like I don't know. I did he write this when he was sixteen or seventeen? That's what I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> I mean, he was really young. I don't know how how old were they when they made this album because i feel like they were maybe like 20 21 something like that i would but say 19 to early 20s i because, if i had to guess off of what i saw on youtube <laughs> okay so lyrics very quickly like i said this is, just feels like generic pop lyrics that some yeah. teenager would write can't you see we the people can make the choices you and i must raise our voices build a future where we belong revoke oppression and right and wrong but do you vote or do you only complain? Do you just carry on in vain as your as your economy crashes, your country goes to war, the deficit their answer to tax the poor, right? Like these lyrics just feel like- very... I guess that's where the worldview thing comes into play. Yeah, right? Uh, you wouldn't speak for yourself and now you're spoken for and yeah. you still bitch, makes me sick. It makes me sick the way you always fucking bitch. Right, like, I and I, I don't want to like. It's mad I deep. Wanna, I get it. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very. It feels very shallow, very surface level. Yeah, um, but you, you only know wanna, so much at that age. Just that you can really do totally, about that. totally. And I, and I want to go on to say that after this album, like the band, lyrically, just takes off in in an amazing direction. It's not so like obvious on this, but I, I think that. Joey, this is another. This is just a lag wagon take in general. Joey Cape mm -hmm. is like he sings the best hooks in pop. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, I, I and I I don't know how to describe it. Like like when he sings like, certain lines, I feel like an itch was scratched. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I you know what I mean. Like and I I don't think there's people that as good as him vocally and you know just creating like good punk rock melodies out yeah. there and, and and so even though i'm kind of making fun of these lyrics i don't think they're bad lyric writers you know what i mean like no uh, no i'm just, i'm just kind of bringing this hot take in you know 16 year old going on here and, and, yeah. and, and like you're you're right like they were young i shouldn't be poking fun at youngins uh <laughs> but we're, we are kind of looking at this in retrospectively so <laughs> yeah here I'll, i was gonna read a little little snippets from some of the reviews that i did find i the, going, the best yeah. one was i said from all music it's from a random ass person shout out mm -hmm. to mike defranco <laughs> wherever Word you are up, mike <laughs> love you your opinion was on point on allmusic.com <laughs> it says sure. This could be easily described as just another no effects clone band from California, but there's more to Lagwagon than just that. Lyrically and structurally, the songwriting has a more of a mature edge. Tragic Vision, for example, talks about today's children becoming addicted to drugs and dealing with handguns at an early age. But then there's also the lighter side that pokes at the band's addiction to coffee and playing in front of an empty bar. Despite the efforts that Lagwagon put into their music, duh still comes across as redundant at times it may mm -hmm. not be the most groundbreaking album out there but is a hint of better things to come mm -hmm. and i think yeah. that last line is like we both agreed on the that carrot already and we're the horse you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and honestly he kind of wrote a better review than they did in the funk news but you know <laughs> sometimes uh, funk news just goes off on a weird tangent and i'm like are we still talking about the album <laughs> like <laughs> We should also bring up the YouTube oh my God. <laughs> review. I don't know if we, we should play a clip or just send people. I think we just should send people there. Um... <laughs> I just listened to it. Uh, I left a comment as well. Oh my God. Uh, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find uh, let this me, person. Let me, I don't think okay, I so saved it. <laughs> I've got, I've got it right here. Okay. The, what's, the what's... YouTuber is named Jula Bard, spelled J-U-L-A. B-A-R-D. 
he only has 749 subscribers subscribers um only 11 people like this album including myself and one person <laughs> disliked it uh it is one of the weird smells of the record he uh examines the colors of it he flips it around he's also a, a british person and so he's got like the yes, that's a right. very uh he's got a accent and he does this laugh constantly where he's like ha 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 it's so good please you have to check it out Jula Bard Lagwagon the review he gets more into like the album cover and the color of the record than the actual music but yeah but, uh, I think he re only reviews the actual music for probably two minutes in yeah, the entire right. it's like, video <laughs> it's, it's hilarious it's a, it's hilarious but you're listening to us uh, maybe we'll we can put a link somewhere later. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we can put it in the show notes. But it's I totally I'm it's worth it. Worth it. Like I said, there wasn't a whole lot on this album, so like mm -hmm. the weird little tidbits that I did find, you know, were pretty normal. Like, okay, this is them touring. Here's some like yeah. couple like quotes about it. This I still don't understand. <laughs> So the beginning of the review is also has like an animated like horse, like Mr. Ed. Like it's a talking horse. I right. don't understand what that has to do with the channel or the album itself. <laughs> I still think about this at night. Like what the fuck did that mean? So I, I had it. I don't know why I was like just making my brain explode. So I went to his Instagram. Is he still and, active? Yeah. Okay, great. So the Instagram when you're there. Uh -huh. Looks completely normal. Like, this is a normal, sane record collector. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what made me, me even more upset. Because <laughs> I couldn't imagine finding this dude on Instagram and be like, Oh, look at all these sweet records. He's really in a fat wreck. Maybe I'll go follow him on YouTube. You go to YouTube and then you're like, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> right. But I'm into that. Like, I, I like bizarre and It's weird. such a bait and no. switch. <laughs> it's great. No, it's wonderful. It was so I, bad I, I had to tell you about it immediately. <laughs> no, it was I, I loved it. I listened to it again. I knew today you would. Because it was I'm sure I, he's a know, nice person. I just not I'm just not on his wavelength. And oh, that's I'm, fine. I'm, I, I like very cringy things. The whole beginning, like you said, with the talking horse. Like, and, then, <sighs> and then it switches over to just like quirky English person. Great. No, I I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> No, <laughs> I didn't really dig up many tidbits. Uh, I did listen to an interview from 2008. Uh, it was with Jesse um, Buglione. I think mm -hmm. that's how you say his name. Uh, he doesn't play in the band anymore. He, I think he left in like 2011 or 12. Yeah. Um, after this, their second kind of longer hiatus. Someone asked him, hey, what's your relationship with that record's beginning? And um, he said no. He said it had not changed, and that was the good thing. And so that to me is cool. I'm glad, you know, like they are they are the cornerstone like fat band, right? People think of yeah. fat records, I think, sometimes and they think of no effects because fat Mike. Yeah. But no effects is not the is not what built that company. It was definitely like Lagwagon and Propagandi yeah. and No You for a Name. Those are well, the bands that I think of the most. When I, I weirdly was talking about that today. Um, we were talking about how Fat Records sh should sign new artists and what they can should consider. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that's really great about Fat Records is they like quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. You know, like they really, really think about what artists they want on their label, like like they they signed Days and Days, which is like mm -hmm. one of their first folk punk bands. But I'm not the biggest fan of folk punk. I I don't like dislike it or anything, but it's not something I super gravitate to. But I'm just like, sure. man, that was a good pick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, they curate their sound. You know, like I couldn't tell you like. L l l I couldn't tell you what an epitaph band sounds like today, for example, but I could tell you what a fat record band. Well, I could hear, if I heard a fat records band, I could be like, are they on fat? Right. Yeah. Like I could easily kind of like say, Oh, this sounds kind of like a fat band. They've been super consistent since the nineties in their sound. And that, that probably has a lot to do with fat Mike and, yeah. and Aaron. Right. Well, like um, one of my newer favorites is pears. And to oh, me, yeah. like, they could tour with Lagwagon and would still have the same fan base, even though they totally. don't do the same thing. They definitely kind of hit the same, they hit the same itch, you know? Totally. That's why I'm like, I, I feel they try to think about what the next step is or like, like, is this uh, band so badass I can't pass 
<laughs> throwing money at them somehow. Yeah. My my other final thought. Uh, this is just something I always think about when I think of Lagwagon uh, mm-hmm. and and No Effects both. When I listen to the band RKL, I often feel that like their both bands' early works are just they're just trying to beat it. And I don't know. I know Mike has, has said that he has like he wanted No Effects to be like RKL. Like I think that was like his favorite band for a while. And I think. I think well, Mem- I mean, they even got Joe Raposo from RKL. I mean, like, right, that's I how big of a fan like, they Joe, are. <laughs> Joe was in their, like, they have, like, a member of their of RKL. Yeah, but I always think of, like, those bands. And that's, like, a really cool influence because RKL's freaking awesome. And, and that's yes. just another thing. But I, I like Lagwagon way better than RKL, so. <laughs> yeah, I got really into the RKL, like, way late in the game, so. <laughs> yeah, it's well, just Lagwagon things, first, but. It's one of those things, though, when I hear RKL, mm-hmm. I hear Lagwagon. It's not, mm-hmm. but it's not the other way around though, because of because I also same way I got into Lagwagon yeah. first. I so mean, like, if, I hear it and I'm like, oh, I totally I get Lagwagon. that. I would say if I probably would have heard RKL first, I would have been like, who is this RKL ripping off right. band? <laughs> well, let's talk about I guess uh, our next project. So, like we said before, we're doing all the studio albums on Fat Records just because. Mm-hmm. They have a bazillion seven inches in EPs, so we're trying to just stick to the studio. So that will be one of my personal favorite albums, which is Propagandi, How to Clean Everything. <laughs> how to Clean Everything. This, yeah. as a preview, How to Clean Everything, when that came out and I heard it for the, well, I, I heard it a few years after it came out. Um, mm-hmm. Because I didn't get into punk until like '95, and I think it's like from '93, right, or '92. Yeah, I probably, I probably honestly probably about the same. I'm like '95, '96. It was like one of the edgiest albums I'd ever heard. Edgy and like radical, just the things they sang about. And just as a preview, I I think Propagandi gets so much better than that album. Yet that album kind of endures. Yeah, like. I'm a very, very much propaganda stand person. <laughs> so like yeah. the longer and the more that I listen to them, the more that I honestly really love. Them. <laughs> They're like my life partner. It's really, really sad. And amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. I also, I, as a birthday present to myself, did buy a how to clean everything hoodie. And I get compliments yeah. on it all the time. Even in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I wore it to Marfa, Texas, which is like, just a dot in the sea of the desert. <laughs> the is street. your hoodie like that? Is your hoodie like that aqua color? Um, the the, the coloring it's black, but the coloring oh, okay. is still the same. But it, okay. yeah, it has like the vacuum and all the stuff on the back. Oh, and awesome! This dude was like, like, Chris was wearing a queers hoodie. I was wearing the propaganda. He was he's like, "You guys are cool." <laughs> like, oh, finally some There's punks ten people up to our in this town. town. <laughs> Right? At least one of them is punk. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm really what a good excited conversation. about conversation. Yeah. What, what a great conversation today. I think I, I think it went well. I hope it will get well. I feel like this is just something we're going to have to like, it's like exercise, you know, you just got to kind of get into it and get to the pace. I hope people listening take something away from it or at least in, yeah. enjoy our, 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 our friendly banter. Yeah. I was like, just, just fan out with us or critique with us, whatever. <laughs> Uh, perhaps I, we should give out our, our socials. I don't know. Yes, yes. Um, where can people find us? I guess it would be what that's called. Let's see. Um, so I personally run my own social channel called Punk Rock Anthropology. That's where you can find me 100% of the time. I have an Instagram. I have a TikTok. And I have a Facebook and a Twitter because I'm just glutton for punishment. So uh, you can find me at, uh, at Punk Rock Anthropology if not at punk rock anthro because that's a lot to spell out me on the other hand like all of my a lot of my stuff is sort of like i have different emails for different things <laughs> what you want to do is do you want to follow me on tiktok because that's where yeah. i talk about punk rock stuff and that's evil laz 905 that e-v-i-l-a-z 905 it is a play on the misfits album live which <laughs> no one ever gets uh, the reference, which is fine, um, but e- but that's also my Twitch uh, streamer yes. handle, EvilLaz905, and I I usually stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8 p.m. PST, and I do video games. But if you want to come and talk about punk rock music while I play video games, hell yeah, because that's 
fun, right? I mean, um, that's how I spent most of my youth, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, right. And and then those are my two main ones. I also have a Discord. It's called Cringeology, and it, it there's not a lot of people there. Like it's just like a few people, but it's like a few different communities in one. Like a, a like a, a people come from like a meme page, and then they come from my punk rock TikTok account. So. If you want to hang out there, Cringeology, that's cool. But yeah, that's where you can reach me, E-V-I-L-A-Z-905 at either Twitch or TikTok. Yeah, and hopefully by the time we release this episode, we'll have some type of social link to where you can just go there and see what episodes we're doing or what we're talking about. So stay tuned for our next episode and get wrecked. Get wrecked. Get wrecked.